training racehorses all starts in the sale room. It's taken us two years to get here and it boils down to four minutes. It's probably a bit akin to a football academy taking on 12 and 13 year olds and they probably take on 50 with the view that they might get two or three out the other end. If we work to those numbers we'd go broke. There's nothing that gives me more joy than seeing good horses at a sale. It gives me a great sense of opportunity. I look at that horse and it just talks to me, right? This horse could be our next champion stadium. We looked at thousands of horses this year. This one could be the one that moves the needle even further for New Gate. Successful stallions are the big ticket items in the racing industry. The top price of a horse being syndicated is, is something like 60 million. If you look at the really successful stands, a horse like I'm Invincible, his fee at the moment is $302,000. He still covers 150, 160 mares. So he's returning to his owners and the stud farm something like $45 million a year, a year. So I look at this horse in six parts, right? Six things I break up structurally. And then the other two things, of course, that are very important, just the basic athleticism and action and their brain, right? So there's, they're the other two. Henry Field is a stud master in the Hunter Valley, an incredibly talented young person in the industry. I think Henry's greatest achievement has been to break into what is a, it's a pretty exclusive club. There are four or five major stud farms in Australia and it's a very competitive market. And so for him to become a very influential farm, not only here in Australia, but around the world, I think speaks volumes of his drive and his ambition and his ability to be successful in what is a very, very tough industry. Back in the foundation days of Newgate, we basically made a big mistake. We started buying horses that were good deals rather than good horses. We bought second tier, third tier stallions because we thought we could make money out of them and it was a big mistake because they didn't get winners and that wasn't sustainable. So I said, right, I want to focus on buying the real product, the proper horses, the really high level stallion prospects. The issue is they're very expensive. When he started out, he wanted to go and buy a good horse off the racetrack, a good a horse like Piera. I think he was uh, you know, underbidder on Piero when he went to stud. But when the bidding got up to around 40 million for Piero, that sort of ruled Henry out because obviously a young stud master, it's very hard to find investors to, uh, to put 40 million up for an unproven stallion. Henry, he went back to the drawing board and thought, how am I going to find the next stallion? It's a very difficult business. We are competing with billionaires. So we had to take a different approach. We felt there was an opportunity where the value of the yearlings in the market were low and the value of the end product was high. We had to take a risk and buy them early. Where if we got one in 10 horses we bought right, or one in 12 horses right, we were a chance of buying the proper product. <laughs> There's 14,000 foals born every year. And of those 14,000 foals, only six to eight colts, six to eight, make high level commercial stains. So I was really like pulling a needle out of a haystack. And the first year we started buying yearlings. We were very fortunate. We got not just two top class racehorses, but two champion first season size uh, and the same crop of horses. We then went out and we bought Extreme Choice. We worked closely with a very smart ratings assessor, Daniel O'Sullivan, who won his maiden so easily. He recommended that we should buy him after, his, after one start. And suddenly now we've gone from having like three or four second tier, third tier racehorses to Capitalist, who was a Golden Slip winner, Russian Revolution, an outstanding top class multiple group one winning sprinter. An extreme choice, he won the Blue Diamond, the other major two year old race in Australia. What number is this guy? 65. 65. Give him a walk please. Yep. Now backing our judgment, buying the horses early, it's a risk, there's no question. It's massive risk, but the only surety is if you don't have a go, you definitely won't succeed. And we had a good go and it came off.
built our stadium business up horse by horse by horse to the point now where Newgate is the leading farm in the Southern Hemisphere by market share. We're very proud of that. Oh, there's no such thing as luck when you're involved with him, you know. He sleeps, but he never stops thinking. He's definitely one of the best judges in the game, but he, joining about him, he never stops learning, he never stops asking questions. He's always looking at pedigrees or confirmation shots. I think that's where he's so good. He just never stops trying to improve himself. If there's one thing that I want Newgate to stand for, it is that in this business, it doesn't matter where you start. If you've got the ambition, the nous, and the hunger to want to succeed, you can achieve it. And if we can inspire other young people to create something, if we can start from nothing with no capital to being the biggest day in operation in Australia by market share, our slogan has always been it's possible, and it really is possible.